I thought I'd make a series of videos called In The Shed, because that's where I am most days, in the shed working on my bikes and projects. Sometimes I work on little bikes like this Honda XL175 that belongs to my son. It had lost power and was smoking, so he took out the engine and took off the cylinder head to have a look inside, but decided to bring it around to me. Keep watching to see how I got on and what I did to fix it. The first thing I had to do was clean off all the grime and dirt from the engine. I used bike cleaner and a brush and then gently hose it off with some water, being careful not to get it into the engine. Sometimes an old tree branch has many uses. In this case, I used it to plug the breather pipe so the water couldn't get into the engine. After waiting a few minutes to let the cleaner work, I got the garden hose and sprayed it off. Back in the garage, the first thing I did was remove the clutch cover. With the clutch cover removed, I can get to the centrifugal oil filter. Using my circlet pliers, I remove the circlet that's holding on the end plate. Then, gently remove the end plate using some pliers. Inside, you can see years and years of built up sludge and crud from the oil that's been centrifuged out. After cleaning out the oil filter, I decided I'd clean up the clutch cover and maybe give it a quick coat of paint to make it look a bit nicer than it is. These casings are made out of magnesium and will rapidly corrode with salty conditions, so they really need to be painted. Using a bit of Abronet abrasive cloth, I give it a good rub up to make a nice key for the paint. I will be reusing the Kickstart oil seal, so I mask that up with some masking tape. Then, to make sure it's clean before painting, I'll give it a spray with bike cleaner, followed by a hose off with some water. Then, take it over to my barbecue to dry, and also to warm it up a little bit, because then the paint just sticks better and hardens quicker. I use this um, silver wheel paint. It's got like a built-in built -in undercoat and can be sprayed directly onto the surface. With the cover drying in the sun, I go back in the garage to reassemble the oil filter. You must line up the protruding tongue with a groove to prevent it from slipping round. Give it a little tap to make sure it's seated down, then replace the circlet with the pliers, ensuring that it's seated correctly in its groove. With the oil filter assembled, the next job to do is look at the top end. The first thing you'll notice is that this liner is a little bit bigger than it should be. Here's the 175 liner, here's the 175 piston, and here's this one, as you can see, very loose. That's because a few years ago, I'd bored it out and fitted a VFR 750 piston. I removed the rings from the piston and tried them separately in the bore, and they dropped straight to the bottom. This was clearly why the bike was smoking. The bore itself looked okay, so I gave it a deglaze with my hone. VFR 750 piston rings are really expensive and you can only buy them in sets of four. So I had a look around and I found an old Kawasaki Z1000 piston and this piston 70 mm diameter is exactly the same size. So I took off the rings to look at them and they're in excellent condition with good gaps when put in the bore, but they wouldn't fit the Honda piston. So that's easily rectified by putting it in my lathe, clocking it up and then remachining the grooves to suit. Here's the new oil ring groove machined to fit the Kawasaki Z1000 piston rings. I trial fitted the oil rings onto the piston, first putting on the expander ring, followed by the two scraper rings. I checked they rotated freely in the piston and inserted them into the bore and they were a nice tight fit, which is good. 
I then fitted the two compression rings to the piston. With the piston and barrel complete, I put them to one side, went out in the garden and recovered the clutch cover from the sun where it had been drying and fitted it to the engine, doing off all the screws. The next job was to make a new base gasket. To do this, I used standard gasket paper, using my thumb to make a mark by pressing down hard on the edge of the liner. Then, using my Swiss army knife, I cut out the circle. With the circle cut out, I placed it over the barrel, pushed down hard, and then rubbed around with my thumb to mark out the periphery of the barrel. With the outer edge of the barrel marked, I used my Swiss Army knife to cut out the gasket shape. The next job to do was to punch the holes where the screw threads will come through and the studs. I'd already marked their positions with my thumb by pressing down hard, so now I use these hole punches to punch the holes with my hammer. The last one to do was the oil flow hole which is stamped just there. I marked this by placing the gasket back on the barrel, lining up the stud holes and giving it a twist of a screwdriver and then using the hole punch to punch it through nice and clean. Then just a last check to make sure it fits and it's good to go. The next job is to fit the piston. So I popped it out of the barbecue to warm it up a bit so that the gudgeon pin would slide in nicely. With the piston fitted back onto the connecting rod, I use these special aluminium buttons rather than the circlips. For two reasons, they can't fall out and they're fitted to most aircraft engines, so they must be good. I then put a thin smear of Permatex Ultra Grey gasket sealer around the base gasket, ready to put the barrel onto the engine. Being a single cylinder, this is an easy job. The barrel just slides straight down over the piston nicely, guiding the cam chain up through the cam tunnel. I position the piston at top dead centre using the chain. Then fit the cam chain guides. When I did the big bore conversion a few years ago, I made a special copper gasket for the cylinder head. This now needs to be rubbed up a little bit with some emery paper and then annealed before it can be reused. I'll be explaining how I make copper head gaskets in a future video. In the utility room, I fill the sink to about two inches deep in water. Then heat my copper gasket up with my blowtorch until it's glowing red hot drop it in the water to quench it. This actually annuls the copper, making it very soft and malleable, so that it squashes between the cylinder head and the barrel, filling up any gaps and making a good seal. Back in the garage, I fit the oil control orifice into the barrel. followed by the cylinder head gasket. Then I replace the cylinder head, followed by the four cylinder head nuts. With the cylinder head tight, I did up the two screws underneath the cylinder head and the two screws at the bottom of the barrel. Now comes the fiddly part on an XL175 engine, getting the camshaft back in with the sprocket. There's two lines on the camshaft sprocket that have to be in line with the cylinder barrel, but we'll talk about that later. But basically you have to fiddle the chain and fiddle the camshaft in and give it a wiggle and eventually you get it in. 
Then you set the crankshaft pulley to the T mark and line up the two lines on the sprocket so they're in flush with the cylinder head. Then replace and tighten the two little screws that hold the camshaft sprocket onto the camshaft. You put one in first, then rotate the crankshaft so the other one's visible. Put that one in and tighten that. Then put a drop of oil on the camshaft bearings and the camshaft lobes just to make sure for the very first run up there's a bit of oil there. Then I use my Permatex Ultra Grey and put a thin bead around the underside of the rocker cover. Just enough, not too much. What I do as well afterwards, use a little artist brush and paint over the surface as well to blend it all in nice and you can remove any excess. With the gasket cement applied, it's time to fit the rocker cover onto the cylinder head. Gently push it down until it engages nicely. It'll snap down tight when it's actually in the correct place. Then replace all the bolts. They're all different lengths, but they can only go in one place. When you're happy they're all correct, tighten them up. Then you have to engage the top cam slipper pivot screw into the cylinder head and do up tight. The next thing to do is set the crankshaft at top dead centre on the compression stroke so we can set the tappets. The tappet clearances are set with feeler gauges. And to adjust the actual clearance, you turn the screw in the centre forwards or backwards and lock it with a lock nut. Once you're happy that's correct, screw on the cap and then repeat on the exhaust one as well. With the tappet clearances set, the next job to do is fit the automatic advance unit and its central nut, then fit the points plate and its wire, engaging the wire in the slot at the back of the engine. The next thing I do is rotate the engine so the points are fully open, then check the gap with feeler gauges. Any adjustment is carried out with these two screws. To set the ignition timing on the engine, I use a battery and a light I connect the wire from the points to one side of the battery and the other side of the battery through a bulb to the engine. Then when you turn the crankshaft and the points open and close, when it gets to fire, which is the F mark, the bulb should go out. And you just basically adjust the points gap and position until this happens. And when you're happy, a little bit of ZX1 extra lube oil on the pivots just to make things work nicely. Back in the shed, I decided to do a bit of buffing on my old buffer to buff up the timing cover and the points cover just to give them a nice shine to complete the job. If you like watching my videos on my engines and shed work, please subscribe. Here's the finished engine ready to go back into the bike.